In this video, we're going to be doing a head-to-head -head matchup between the Daikin Fit Enhanced and the 38 Mira, which is a both Bryant and Carrier heat pump that's available in the market. It's a side discharge unit, just like the Daikin Fit. We're going to be doing a comparison between the heating and cooling efficiency data. We're also going to be talking about tax credits. We're going to be looking at the low ambient COP data, so we can do a head-to-head -head matchup there and see how they stack up against each other. Before we get started, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you smash that like button for the algorithm and consider subscribing to the channel if you found this content helpful. We put out daily and weekly content on how you can get the best HVAC for your home. So if you get value from this content, liking it and subscribing is a great way that you can show support. So that being said, let's dive into it. There's a lot of data that we're going to be covering in this video, like I said. So let's just start with kind of the basics. We're going to talk about SEER2, HSPF2, EER ratings. Those are just efficiency ratings for heat pumps. Some of those, there's some overlap for air conditioners as well. And so basically we're going to go through this, this data and just dive right in. So if you look right here, this this is preferred compact heat pump for the 38 Mira. This is a Bryant model, but the same thing is also available from Carrier. Carrier is Bryant, if you didn't know that. They're basically the same, just different lines, different products available. And so a lot of this stuff, there's some overlap between the two. But one of the things that we're also going to talk about when we dive into this, and this is the Daikin Fit. If you're tuning into the channel for the first time, and you might not have heard of the Daikin Fit, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know all about the Daikin Fit because we talk about it a lot. It's one of our favorite heat pumps for a variety of reasons. But this is energystar.gov and I'll make sure to link this in the description for you. Energystar.gov is, this is a great way that you can find products that are, or find rebates that are available on heat pumps. You just go to product finder, select heat pumps, and then you're able to search them up. But I, right now I have the Daikin pulled up, the DZ6VS, which is the Daikin Fit Enhanced that I just showed you, this bad boy right here. And then the 38M series from Carrier. And again, from Carrier, from Bryant, it's the exact same system. There's no difference. Now, one thing I want to point out, and we'll just kind of dive into the data now, I was talking about SEER2 ratings. SEER stands for Seasonal Energy Efficiency Ratio. EER stands for Energy Efficiency Ratio. The difference between the two is seasonal basically means during peak season. So in the summer, when your heat pump is operating in cooling mode and it's operating at peak cooling, this is what that, that rating is. And so on the uh, 38M series, it goes from 15.3 to 18.4. So that's not bad. If we look at the Daikin Fit, it's somewhere between 17 and 17.5. And you might be saying, okay, well, what's the difference between the systems? Why is there a range? It's because tonnages is going and AHRI matchups are going to affect the actual efficiencies of these systems. So if you look at the 38M series and you see how some of the systems are up to 18.4, that's probably going to be on the lower tonnage systems. Here in a little bit, we're going to be doing, this is COP data and performance data for the Daikin Fit, and this is the same for that 38M series. So we're going to go through that and you'll get to see how they actually stack up because although CO rating could be the same, heat pump efficiency comes down to a metric called COP, which stands for coefficient of performance, which the way I like to explain it is basically it's the amount of watts of heat you get per one watt of energy so if, or electricity that's used so it's basically the energy efficiency by comparison to you know electric heat because if you were looking at an electric space heater right that always has a COP of one because it's one watt in one watt out that's just how a space heater works it's an electric space heater and it uses resistive heat to provide you with heat so a COP of four for example would mean that a system is putting out for one watt of electricity consumed it's putting out four watts of heat and so that would be you know four times as efficient as a space heater or a 400 percent efficiency by comparison so that's how heat pumps operate and get those higher efficiency ratings and and still maintain to be an electric heat source now one of the things we're going to talk about and look at is data for at five degrees fahrenheit because cop at five degrees is one of the metrics that's important for hitting this number so where you see it says cold climate eligible this means that for the purpose of this tax credit, where if you're not familiar with these tax credits right now, there's a $2,000 federal heat pump tax credit available, in addition to local rebates that are in your municipality or in your you know utilities. Like right now, there's some rebates in Colorado on in Excel territory. There's also some rebates in Phoenix, Arizona and SRP territory on inverters and in single stage systems. And there's just, they're incentivizing you to put in higher efficiency equipment. But this is the, all these blue states here that you can see Colorado, Utah, Idaho, all this. These are the northern states, and so they have to qualify for the, the cold climate heat pumps, whereas here in the south, you look at like Texas, Florida, 
Arizona, California, Nevada, the orange states here, that those are qualifying for, if you see something in any of these heat pump product lines when you're like browsing for yourself on energystar.gov where it says tax credit eligible, that means that's referring to basically the southern regions and then cold climate means it qualifies as a cold climate heat pump, northern regions, and therefore qualifies for those rebates. So 15.3 to 18.4 on the EER2 rating, you can see it ranges from 10 to 8.8. .8. And then the HSPF2 rating on the uh, carrier Bryant system is 10 to 9.6. And when we look at the Daikin Fit, you can see it's a little bit higher efficiency on the HSPF2 of two ratings so that means the Daikin fit is a little lower it's 8.5 to 8.6 but the EER rating is basically neck and neck where it maintains a consistent EER2 of 10 for the Daikin fit whereas this one drops to 8.8 .8, which I would say that doesn't even matter like when it comes to inverters in my opinion I know some people have other things to say and they'll post their thoughts in the comments but EER when it comes to inverter systems variable speed systems it does not matter at the end of the day because it's just not a, a very accurate reflection of how well a system's going to perform because most of your efficiency from an inverter comes from the fact that when it first kicks on, it's running at a fraction of its full capacity, right? It might be 10%, might be 20% capacity. That depends on the turndown ratio of the system and just how it's designed uh, because some systems have a wider operating bandwidth. But the bottom line is I don't pay too much attention to EER. The only reason I do is because in climates or in certain areas like Excel territory, for example, which is Colorado, Utah, a few other areas that are where Excel Energy is a utility provider, Excel requires certain EER ratings in order for you to get a rebate. And so that's the only reason that we pay attention to that. So all in all, they're, so far they're basically neck and neck. Now, there's a few differences that stand out. Another thing that I really like about inverters, and this is why we, we love the Dyke a bit so much, is because it has a 45 decibel rating when it's running, which is extremely quiet. If you compare that to a traditional air conditioner, that's normally somewhere around 60 to 70 decibels, depending on efficiency and you know how new it is. When you look at this carrier product or the, or the Bryant, like, which again are the same, you could see the sound. It's a little bit noisier, but not much. It says quiet levels during lowest capacity cooling operation are 54 decibels. So it's probably going to be a little bit more noticeable, but probably, you know, not bad. But Daikin is known for just having whisper quiet systems. You can also see here, it has a lot of, we'll, we'll talk about warranties and some of the differences between these two systems, but let's actually dive into the performance data. Now, one thing that you we'll look at here is when we're looking at these charts, these numbers to the untrained eye might be kind of hard to navigate. And so I'll kind of explain what this is. Basically, this is for the 38 Mira. This is for the Bryant carrier heat pump. The top here is basically what we're looking at in terms of where it says outdoor size. That's the tonnage of the heat pump, right? So you're talking one and a half to five tons on the tonnage. And then you can see right here when it says energy star, yes, yes. And then the rest of these are no. So this is pointing out, and this is something to pay attention to and I'll look at the COP data to see and not just the COP data but also the output data but this says it is not energy star rated which I'm a little surprised only because at a glance it says the heating capacity at five degrees is 50,000 BTUs on their five ton and the COP data is 1.96 so from a efficiency standpoint that should hit the cold climate rebate requirements so the cold climate rebates 1.75 COP at five degrees Fahrenheit which I explained what COP was earlier and then um, it, the capacity cannot derate below 70 75 percent I think it's 70 percent off the top of my head and so that 70 percent going down to 50,000 BTUs here from a 60,000 BTU unit means this system because see let's see what's the heating capacity is so it's 59,000 at 47 degrees and so at five degrees yeah I don't understand why that shouldn't so in my eyes that would qualify I would verify with like a if you're a carrier or a Bryant dealer you can chime in let me know in the comment section below because I'm curious if this does qualify or if there's a reason why it doesn't but bottom line and same thing on the HSPF data it does hit the numbers that is needed for that but bottom line is so we're looking at your COP on you know the one and a half and the two ton system here is two and 1.8 when we compare that to the Daikin fit and we look at this chart, which is a little bit different. So this is the two ton Daikin fit enhanced. You can see at 47 degrees, it has a COP of 3.3 which I'm curious, let's see, Bryant at 47 is actually has it beat a little bit at 3.6. So it's a little bit more efficient there. And then when it gets down to five, so it's at two. So basically at two, that me by comparison with the Daikin fit. So at five degrees here, they're literally neck and neck. They're identical. So this COP basically, again, means one watt consumed for every two watt 
lots of heat output. So a COP of two, pretty efficient, not bad. And this is on the two ton system, as you can see right here. So that neck and neck comparison. And then when we look at the higher tonnages, if we go up to the five ton, one thing to note where the Bryant system does kind of have the other one, the Daikin Fit B, is that the Daikin Fit Enhanced does not go up to five tons. The Daikin Fit standard heat pump does go to five tons, but it does not qualify for a cold climate heat pump rebate because of the capacity at those lower temperatures. But if you look at the four ton system here, you can see that D rates to about 31,000 or yeah, BTUs at five degrees Fahrenheit. And then same thing maintains a COP of two, but this system does qualify for that tax credit. So I'm a little surprised why Bryant system wouldn't, but I'll have to do a little bit more research on that because they're saying on the four ton system here, the heating capacity rated is 46,000 at five degrees Fahrenheit and then 1.9 on the COP. And that's for the four ton, which again, so the Daikin Fit four ton technically has it beat a little bit by COP, but the capacity is lower than what they're stating on this chart here, if I'm reading that correctly. So that's something interesting to note. Like I said, the so far kind of the perks or the differences between the two is if you look at the performance of the 38 Mira, this one will be slightly louder, still only as low as 54 decibels, but you know, at 45 decibels, Daikin Fit clearly has a beat, which is not surprising. Daikin Fit's super quiet. This system is a little bit more efficient and has a little bit better COP data. And there's one thing that I noticed about this system that is kind of unique by comparison, and that is the, the temperature range. So basically the cooling operating range goes all the way up to 130 degrees heating, and it's actually low ambient cooling, which you're never gonna really use that unless it's for a server room, because like you have to air condition servers even in the winter. And, and so that's something that, that happens, but more of a commercial application, not really for homes. People don't typically run them. That are grow rooms. We see a lot of, you know, in Colorado, there's a lot of grow rooms, so people have to run that sort of thing. So this heat pump will actually run in cooling in the middle of winter effectively, which is great. Heating operating range goes all the way down to negative 22. So that would explain where kind of that bandwidth in terms of the temperatures it can run at. Effectively, it's a little bit lower on the Bryant. So if you're in a super cold climate, this might be something that's more important to you, especially if the sound isn't as big of a deal to you. And there's a couple other things I want to point out. One is we're going to talk about warranty. We're also going to talk about EXV and EEVs, what that means. Before we do that, if you haven't done so already, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. Again, it's just a free way that you can support the channel if you've enjoyed this content so far and you're finding value from it. But that being said, what I wanted to talk about was the difference between the warranties between these two systems. So if you look at the preferred compact heat pump, it has a 10 year warranty. And so that's going to be on your parts and your compressor. Daikin is going to, they're known for having the best warranty in the industry. And so if you look at their system, their systems all have a 12 year warranty that's on parts. And also they have a 12 year unit replacement guarantee, which means if the compressor goes out in the first 12 years, instead of a replacement compressor, they actually give you a brand new unit. So that's a nice feature of the Daikin is the warranty, but by about two years. And then one thing that both systems have is what's called an EXV or an electronic expansion valve. Now, one of the ways, one of the things that I really like about inverter systems, the reason we really recommend them to people that are planning on staying in the home for a while and really want to get something that's efficient and is going to provide them with maximum comfort, but also some efficiency and some savings is an inverter system. And the reason is, is because they ramp up and down similar to like how a motor works by comparison with a single stage system, which kind of is either on or off, right? When a single stage system first kicks on, it pulls a bunch of power uh, right away. It takes a while to kind of find its equilibrium. It's kind of like thinking of a single stage system as an analog system and a variable speed system is like a digital system. And an EXV or electronic expansion valve is the device that controls the flow of refrigerant into the coil. So you have an A coil that sits on top of your furnace or your or inside your air handler if you have an air handler. And that coil is where the refrigerant from the outdoor unit, which is this, you know, compact heat pump, this condenser that sits outside, circulates through the indoor unit. An electronic expansion valve is special in the sense that it is communicating via electronic wires to the outdoor unit. And it's basically opening and closing just a small amount based on the exact flow of refrigerant that you need going into the coil on the indoor unit. And so it'll open up a little bit to allow more refrigerant and close a little bit, but it's able to pinpoint precisely how much refrigerant it should be allowing to go to the indoor coil. And that's part of how it increases its efficiency, but that's also how it increases how comfortable it is and operates more quietly because it's only when the compressor first kicks on and it's running at lowest stage of capacity and it's just barely ramping up, that expansion valve is just barely opening up ever so slightly as the compressor outside ramps up and as the fan inside ramps up. And this is a feature that is mainly a comfort feature. It just delivers a much quieter system. It delivers a system 
that has much better cooling too. So it's just a generally more comfortable system and it's a much more accurate system in terms of how it runs. And if there's a problem with your ductwork or your duct design, the system is gonna throw an air code that tells you, hey, the airflow is off. And so they really do like to be well-designed. They're not systems that will do well if like the system's undersized. And so that's why we're always double checking our ductwork to making sure we're putting in a system that's gonna work well with your existing system or your existing ductwork. And if not, making some modifications to your ductwork because oftentimes the difference between a properly sized system and good working ductwork is maybe one or two duct runs additional just to kind of open up the system and let it breathe better. But this is, you know, all in all between the two systems, they both have their pros and cons. Dyke and Fit looks like it's a little bit quieter. I would look into that Energy Star rebate thing a little bit more with the Bryant systems because I'm surprised it says it's not a, you know, Energy Star system. Yeah, I'm wondering if I'm reading that wrong for some reason, but yeah, I would think that is a system because I know this air handler does have that EXV. I would think it would, it would qualify for that rebate, especially with kind of showing it here and showing that it's cold climate. But there might be something I'm not aware of and, and why it doesn't qualify. If that's the case, I'll post an update video when I find out about that. But hopefully you enjoyed this content. And if you have any questions, post them in the comment section below because we do read and respond to as many comments as possible. And if you have a specific project you're working on that you have questions with, you can just make sure you let us know, you know, kind of your region or, hey, I'm in Ontario, Canada, or I'm in this city in Alberta, or I'm in Newport Beach, California, or where you don't really need HVAC in Newport Beach, but it's a nice Mediterranean climate there. But you get my drift. If you point, tell us what your climate is, tell us size of your house and what you're thinking about doing and you have what your questions are. We try to respond to all the comments. Keep in mind, we are going into the busy season right now. And so it will start to get a little harder to respond to comments, but we do normally get back to people within a week. So I appreciate you taking the time to tune in. Any questions, let us know in the comment section below. And if you happen to be in one of the areas we service like Denver, Colorado or Phoenix, Arizona, you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free. We come out for free for all first time customers, whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance, or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement. And there's actually a link in the description below where you can actually schedule online at your convenience, as well as an up-to-date list of the cities and states that we service. So you can stay up to date when we start servicing your Metro. And as mentioned earlier, there's also a few videos popping up on the screen right now that talk about heat pump efficiency ratings, as well as a few other heat pump videos that YouTube thinks you should watch. So make sure you check those out if you haven't done so already, and we'll catch you on the next episode.